let me know when. You're on. Okay. So here we are in um, the Santa Clara neighborhood in Eugene, a suburban neighborhood in North Eugene, uh, on an uh, eWeb easement. Um, that's the Eugene Water and Electrical Board easement. And it stretches from the road out there all the way in past me to the black, well it actually goes to the telegraph, telephone pole way in the back. But what's important to note is that if you look at those blackberries right there, is that this whole easement basically looked like that until two years ago when Jim, the gentleman holding the phone, decided to get in here and cut it all down. Uh, in the hope of creating something um, in the way of a community garden of sorts. We still don't have water, water here, for city water, um, but it still a rather um, presents us with a very remarkable opportunity to do some interesting research into dry farming. We're very influenced, of course, by the work of Amy Garrett at OSU, who's helping us out with this particular project here. So basically what happened is that after Jim had got the, um, uh, uh, the blackberries cut down, he mulched heavily with cardboard and grass clippings and leaves. Left it for a year. When he saw that the blackberries weren't coming up, he then came in, you can see these beds, I'm sitting on one of these beds now, he then came in, laid down a layer of composted horse manure and grass clippings. He then put down on top of that a layer of uh, non-composted uh, cedar sawdust and horse manure from the Jasper Mountain Center. So essentially what we ha have is a sandwich here was originally soil in which blackberries were growing and suppressed with the cardboard and the grass clippings. Then the compost came in top and then on top of that we have um, this layer of uh, what essentially looks very much like um, um, sawdust that has horse manure in it. Now this is cedar. Apparently cedar is preferred in horse stables. Um, horses prefer cedar to any other type of um, uh, sawdust for I think it's the way it sort of affects its feet. Um, so um, when Jim told me that um, this plot might be available to grow in I was very excited because I thought here's an opportunity to uh, try and experiment in dry farming using a technique and an approach that would be incredibly applicable and readily accessible in our bioregion. You can generally get hold of horse manure very easily. You can generally get hold of shavings and so on and so forth from stables very easily. You can generally find that there's a blackberry patch that you need to get into, for example. So um, potentially it's something that we could, we could copy. Now where things get interesting here is that if you have a look over here you can see this very thick black plastic tarp that Jim put down. And essentially what he did, if you come back to me Jim, is that he put this tarp on, on this plot here um, last spring. So this plot has not, didn't see any winter rain at all over the course of the last little while. It's seen no moisture come into it for over a year. And we're now beginning to plant into it. So let's see what happens when we actually part this and see what's underneath. And I've already planted uh, the row over there and the row up to this point. And these are potatoes that Amy Garrett at OSU has provided us with. And what I'm essentially doing is parting the sawdust until I get down to a layer of essentially the composted material. And if you can see, I can just stick my hand into that. Isn't that beautiful? And when I pull it out, you can see that's gorgeously moist. Okay? Yeah, smells pretty good too. And this is essentially what we're wanting to do, is put our potato in there. I'm actually planting it just below the surface of the soil, tucking it in a little bit, and then mo gently moving the sawdust in on top, and then repeating the process here. 
down to where I start hitting the composted material, digging in, putting the potato in, filling in lightly with sawdust. I was doing a little bit of thinking about how far we would put stuff down. I'll talk about that or write about that maybe at a different point. But essentially at some juncture we had to sort of wing it. And I couldn't get hold of Amy on the telephone just now, so decided to go this way. Again, planting it just below the surface of the soil, padding it in and then moving in the sawdust on top. We're on basically foot spacing in rows two feet apart. Again, we've got, I don't know, I think we might have four or five varieties of, of potatoes from Amy that we're going to be planting today. It's now Mar May, what's the date? The 10th or 9th? 13th. T the 13th or so. Friday. And we'll basically keep this um, project sort of updated on video um, as we go along. Uh so the yields on this Elba are quite erratic. Some plants are extraordinary. Do you want to lift that up, Jim? Yeah. So some plants are extraordinarily sort of productive, it seems. Got even some more in here. Look at that all told. That's not bad for one plant, is it? Dry farmed. Pretty damned impressive. 